Let us pray the prayer for mission together. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. Please be seated. Please forgive me. Um, many changes in this church, namely the lights. Apparently, they're so bright now. They give a beautiful, warm hue on video. Not that I would be the expert, but it is so lovely. But but we have been uh, dealing with a little glare. And so um, I actually typed up my words because I didn't want to lose any of it for you. But hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome. We are in a new and different place. We await and we know what is already here with one another. So last Monday marked the end of a worldwide Anglican communion gathering of bishops, spouses, and ecumenical friends. Although the world, or the news from the world, wanted to set people from the southern hemisphere apart from those living in the northern hemisphere on dicey policies like human sexuality and what it means to be human. The story being told throughout the eight days of this retreat for, again, bishops, their spouses, and their friends, the story of the eight days was a bit of a different one. The story was primarily facilitated by the Archbishop of Canterbury, the very right reverend, Justin Welby. And the story was about an invitation an invitation to be in relationship, that love covers a multitude of sins, that we must develop the capacity to follow Christ and love and care for one another as we do that. He affirmed that this Anglican communion was not a hierarchy of churches setting policies for people throughout the world. No, my friends, it's a, it's a pretty loose constellation like the stars are. A constellation of churches all discerning God's call for them in today's world. Trying to make space for relationship amidst disagreement and great tension. The last service celebrated by the Archbishop of Cape Town, the very right Reverend Tambo Makobo, had people on their feet while the bishops and their spouses and their friends left rejoicing with one another and going their variety of ways. They sang this song that I would like to invite you to sing with me today. I know, I know there's no choir. I know you all have voices. If, if this uh, gets in the way of your own prayer, just, you know, just close your mouth and just have it wash over you. But if it invites you to experience prayer in a different way, please sing along. In the bulletin on the very bottom, the words are there. Uh, it's a South African spiritual. So I, from the 8 o'clock, people were like fishing for the words. It's just on the bottom. It's not very long. It's just one line. Mayenzi we. Tando yako. We'll repeat it enough that you'll just kind of catch it. Uh, it actually means in English, your will be done on earth. Oh, Lord, I omitted the on earth part. Sorry about that. Um, but I have to tell you, I really like doing the dismissal here. I know I'm not like a Julie with spirit fingers in the past, but like I love doing the dismissal because it's like, now that you've been nourished, now go. Go into the world rejoicing in the spirit that we have celebrated together and share that with other people. So, if you would do me the honor, and I know that... Uh, Georgina and Charlie are here. I know y'all like to sing, so hopefully you'll catch this super fast. All right? My
costing much, or it, it costing their lives much. So I just wonder, th this process of engaging the world and doing our part in bringing about God's kingdom, or as we say, God's dream for the world together is understated. It's tough. Like Jesus knew that. It's, it's tough. He was stressed. This process is not an easy one. And it was also what he knew he was about and what he had to hold on to and what he's guiding us along with too. So let this gospel not read as a forecast, right? It's not a forecast or an explanation of what will happen to us if and when we choose to follow God. Jesus is, ask, is actually telling his disciples that faith sustains us through any and all kinds of rejection or change in social reality, a change in relationship that that would bring. That our faith will sustain us amidst all of the changes of life and all of its complications. So I was thinking about um, taking us back just a little bit, a little smidge, um, to Palestine in Luke's Gospel. Because again, like, why would he tell this group of disciples that? So it was a place that was connected to Europe and Africa and Asia. And so anyone who controlled Palestine would control the roads and would control um, commerce. Right? So remember the Roman Empire? Right, right, right. So the Romans invaded Palestine in 63 BC. The Jews were allowed their own customs and their own religion, of course. And although there were many beautiful architectural and structural uh, benefits now afforded to Palestine, the Jews didn't really accept this Roman occupation. So Luke was writing to a people who identified as both Jews and as Gentiles. He was writing um, with a concern for their personal and their daily relationships. And Luke's story of the gospel is a narrative that has hope in the fulfillment of God's will. So the first disciples left their families to follow Jesus. And they have already experienced family strains on which Jesus speaks. So Luke's church is also experiencing a lot of persecution. So while Jesus' words are about division... In the gospel or we read it and we think oh god it's about division and it's really unsettling for us now in 2022 not gonna lie there's a lot of division out there right or maybe even within here i mean if we go politics if we go schools if we go any institution there's a lot of division right now so i think it still speaks true to us but i don't think god's word its purpose is meant to be divisive now, there are consequences. There are consequences to following God's word in our life. That is for sure. And I think Jesus' first disciples were already experiencing those consequences. So, so his words to them were actually words of comfort. When you follow, these are the things that happen. Whoever that was who's, who was the mother to the daughter-in-law who don't get along, I'm sure there was one person there. That, that it was true for. So here he was just um, comforting them and, and claiming that your reality, I see you. This is real for you. You have endured much and you have suffered much. I see that and I know that. And together we will continue to do God's will. So what does this tell us about our God? God is in our suffering. In there with us. Suffering, stressed out with us. Eventually, he'll do some things in Luke, like go to his own death because of this relationship for us, because of the will that he knows that God has for building a better world where all are seen. So this fire that he talks about in the first sentence in the gospel is pretty catalytic. The way Jesus loves is catalytic. Jesus' love is catalytic. 
Jesus may seem like fire to some. God's word may seem like a hammer that breaks a rock into pieces for others, as we see in Jeremiah. The good news may seem like wheat that nourishes for some others. And really, the words from the prophets, like Jeremiah, may also feel like it's a harsh sting. Jesus' love is catalytic. Jesus' love ignites, it starts up, it nudges, it powerfully suggests or encourages. But you ask, catalytic for what? Ah, my Yenzi way. Tando yako, your will be done on earth, O oh Lord. In Psalm 82 that we read together, thanks Chris for leading that, we're reminded of what that will is. Save the weak and the orphan, defend the humble and needy, rescue the weak and the poor, deliver them from the power of the wicked. And so Jeremiah also recounts this in the first lesson. Let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. Let's all go from this place, this place right here. <coughs> nourished in community. Nourished by God's redeeming love and companionship in our life. Knowing, like expressed in today's letter to the Hebrews, that many people of faith have come before us enduring much much more than we can even imagine. Now we are surrounded by a beautiful plot of witnesses that in its own right cultivates a friendship, a care, and a love that can help us catalyze our own desire to do, to do all things moving towards God's dream for us, God's will for us, God's desire for us, all of us together. Mayen ziwe tando yago. Did you catch it? Mayen. 